Hey, hi, hello everyone, Morphin Mike here. Represent, and welcome to the news. So as we all know, I'm a big geek and I like following, you know, what's going on in the world of geek and comics and anime and video games and all that stuff. And I thought maybe I would share some of that information that I find interesting with you guys. So basically what I'm gonna do is that through the week I'm going to find stories that I think are interesting and then share them with you guys here every Monday, give or take a day. So in any case, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Nintendo's president, Mr. Iwata's approval rating, has now gone up to 80.64%, which is an increase from 77.64%. I My numbers may be a little off, my apologies. A piece of information to consider when learning this is the fact that in 2012, his approval ratings were in the low 90s. So to go from 90 to 77 to 80 is... Uh, it's something. And considering the fact that Mr. Iwata took a huge pay cut, as well as a lot of other people at Nintendo, because of the Wii U's poor sales, I think any improvement is one that they're gonna just, just, just grab at and hold on to, hopefully. In Europe, a game called Squid Odyssey is available for cross-buy. If you buy the 3DS version, you'll get a free copy for the Wii U at you know, for, for free, obviously. And I know Sony's been kind of playing around with this as well, and people seem to like it, and I like the concept of it. The developers of Squid Odyssey actually went to Nintendo of America to, you know, say, hey, we want to do this, and they actually said no. Their statement to the developers was simply, they could not do it at this time. So whether this is a time-sensitive issue, or they're trying to get more money or something, I don't know. But I'll just say, I'm all for something like this. Again, not a business person, but as a gamer, I appreciate such acts. Keeping in line with the Nintendo news, for you Pokemon fans, you might be interested in knowing about something called Pokemon Symphonic Evolution. What this is is essentially 18 years of Pokemon music and stuff in a big orchestra-like music event. It sounds really cool, actually. There's only two places that this is going to play at at two different times. August 15th at the Warner Theater in Washington, D.C., and September 19th at the Mann Center for Performing Arts in Pennsylvania. And for even more Pokemon news, PokemonCenter.com's coming back, guys! For those who don't know, in New York City, there used to be a place called the Pokemon Center, which eventually kind of went away and is now the Nintendo store in New York City. But they also had a website where people could, you know, order from anywhere and get their, you know, Pokemon merchandise from the website as opposed to flying all the way to New York. Eventually the site went away and everything, but it's coming back and it's going to be a place where you can buy all kinds of cool Pokemon merchandise. So I'm excited. I'm just saying it's going to be awesome. I love Pokemon. And we got one last bit of Pokemon news, guys. I, kn I know it's a lot, but trust me, this one's great. Now, way back when, there used to be a game for the Game Boy called Pokemon Trading Card Game, which was essentially the Pokemon Trading Card Game, but you could, you know, play it on your Game Boy. This game was the bee's knees, I tell you. I bring this up because Europe has actually released this game on the Nintendo eShop. So now you can get it for your 3DS. Well at least in Europe. As far as I know, no word has been made about if Nintendo is going to make this a US thing as well, but holy balls, I certainly hope so. As someone who carries their 3DS around pretty much everywhere, it's great to have a selection of digital games that you can always just go to. Um, for example, I just bought Pokemon Trozy. I'm not saying that because it's Pokemon. That is a great, I just got a few minutes and I just want to play something really quickly, you know, just to kill some time. I actually still have my uh, physical copy of the game to this day. Still works, but I still would buy it digitally. In non-Nintendo news, Lindsay Lohan is officially suing Rockstar for likeness in GTA 5. Yeah, it's gone through. For those who don't know, way back when, Lindsay Lohan was making a big ruckus about how there was a character in the game that was basically her, and they used her likenesses and all this stuff. The character's name was, I think, uh, Lacey Lynn or something like that? Jones. Lacey Jones. Lacey Jones was the character in GTA 5. Now, a while back ago, she was saying how this is ridiculous and how she was going to sue, but now, apparently, it, it has gone through to be an actual court case, so we'll see what happens. Now, my personal thoughts on this is... Uh, really? Lindsay, I understand you're going through some tough times here, and trust me, I, I sympathize and all that stuff. 
Can you get over yourself, please? I'm not a lawyer or anything, so I'm not gonna speak to, you know, who has a better case or anything like that. But I will say, in terms of just general premise, I think this is ridiculous. In movies, games, comics, or whatever, people like to use, you know, current culture as references all the time. But even so, I really... I, I don't see this as the case. I myself played through Grand Theft Auto V's story completely, and I even remember playing this mission. Not for a millisecond did I think, This is Lindsay Lohan, what are they doing? Again, Lindsay, I understand life's tough and everything, and you're going through some trouble, but... Uh, come on. For those of you who still own a PS3 and haven't upgraded to a PS4 yet, If you're interested in getting your hands on a DualShock 4 controller and using it on your PS3, you can now do that. Apparently the new system update for the PlayStation 3 allows you to take your DualShock 4 controller and have it be read by the PS3 and use it like a regular controller. With that said, there are two things you should keep in mind though. One, if you have a PlayStation 4, this will desync the controller from the PlayStation 4. So. Just keep that in mind. It's an easy process to resync it, but just don't be in total shock. And the second thing is, is that I know some people are saying the controller is having some difficulty with reading some games in terms of controlling or something or other. So I wouldn't throw away your DualShock 3 controller, but if you're like me who eventually wants to get a PS4 and you need a second controller for your PS3, this might be an option to consider. Oh, Minecraft, how you are everywhere. It's disgusting. I mean, seriously, I was at a Barnes & Noble and they had like just a shelf of just Minecraft stuff. Like toys! Minecraft! Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm really happy for their success, to be honest. But what I'm even more happy about is the fact that Minecraft is now being used at a summer camp to get kids involved into science and engineering. This camp is using it to, you know, spark interest in different fields of study for children, and it's actually opening up like a lot of different doors in my opinion. One thing that the camp is really happy about is that it's teaching digital discipline, and the other thing that the article touches on is the fact that a lot of older people who aren't too game savvy are calling in middle schoolers to be junior teachers to help the younger students learn how to use Minecraft properly for these purposes. So not only do we have a summer camp using Minecraft to spark interest into other fields that could lead to, you know, careers if it sparks the kids' interest, but it's also teaching kids how to be disciplined and structured with their video game time, and it's even helping kids maybe be interested in teaching or helping kids in the future. I mean, you never know where something can lead you, and the fact that a video game as popular as Minecraft is starting to do stuff like this I think is mind-blowing. I mean, who knows? We could have a spaceship made in the future, and that k person's gonna be like, I went to a summer camp, and played Minecraft, and I made a spaceship because of it. It could happen, people. So in Finland, there was a video game tournament for a bunch of games, and one of those games was Hearthstone. Now, at this tournament, everything was divided in terms of, like, men's section and women's section for a video game tournament. But what sparked the interest of the internet was the fact that a Hearthstone tournament was completely banned for women. Now, obviously when this news came to light, the internet exploded and, oh god, the backlash was horrible. And, if I may say, rightfully so. And because of said backlash, the Hearthstone tournament that women were banned from is no longer banned for women. Women can enter this tournament. There's just one little tiny uh, thing though. Sorting players by gender has not changed. And because of this whole thing with uh, the Hearthstone tournament and women not being able to play, women can now enter men's tournaments, but men can't enter women's tournaments. So basically, this in a way kind of just reversed? How do you come to a conclusion where that is the solution that's gonna make everything okay? Because quite honestly, it doesn't. People, gamer is a gender neutral pronoun. Let me tell you something. I play games all the time. And my ass gets handed to me by girls most of that time. As far as I know and can really think of, there's nothing that gives a guy an advantage over a girl in video games or even the other way around, I don't see it. And that's what they're saying the issue is. They're saying they're not gonna let, you know, guys enter girls tournaments because 
of that reason. I don't, I, what is going on? Why do we have this? Why have we not come so far in these coming years? Why? I don't understand. I think we as a community of gamers have really tried hard to get rid of this, you know, girls can't play video games sort of thing. And I think we have come a long way. We're not perfect, obviously, but we've come a long way. But when something like this just kind of pokes their head in and says, yo, we're gonna stir the pot, why? It's a real shame, and I think this is something that should be avoided. I, I see no reason for it. I see no reason for it. And that's all I gotta say. Now, I'm a huge Halo nerd. I played the original Halo, played more hours than I would like to admit of Halo 2's multiplayer. So as you can imagine, when Halo 2 Anniversary was announced, especially with the Master Chief Collection, I was very excited. I, I love I love Halo. 343 Industries actually released a new trailer for the collection, and the other news that came out about the game was actually from RTX this year. They announced that the Mongoose will be in Halo 2 Anniversary's multiplayer. And not only that, but it will have a turret on the front. You can drive a mongoose, and you can also go pew 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 pew. I think this is a cool idea, but it makes me ask the question why. One of the things that really made me excited for Halo 2 Anniversary's announcement was the fact that they were like, hey guys, multiplayer from Halo 2 is gonna be the same. And I'm all for trying new things, I'm all for adding, you know, new things here and there, but it does make me wonder what's going to happen. How is this going to affect multiplayer? Is it going to affect it in a huge way? Is it not? Maybe I'm overreacting? I don't know. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, just for the record. Speaking of another one of my favorite games, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix, huzzah! So Kingdom Hearts is my favorite game of all time, and I loved Kingdom Hearts 2, and I'm very excited for this year when Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix is coming out. A video comparing the original Kingdom Hearts 2 cutscenes and this and that to Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix HD re-release or whatever um, just came out and holy crap it looks so much better. It's just, you know, they made the graphics cleaner for HD and there's also new skins for some of the characters. Now to be fair that has to do with the fact that this is Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix as opposed to Kingdom Hearts 2, but still, it looks so cool. I don't know, I'm just really excited, and I thought the differences were very noticeable, so... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm excited. Now, I'm sure most Dragon Ball Z fans have already seen the Battle of Gods movie in some fashion or another. But it should be noted that it will be playing in select theaters from August 5th through the 9th. If you're interested in seeing it in theaters, Funimation has put a place on their website that you can look up theater locations to see if it's going to be playing in your area. And tickets have not gone on sale yet as far as I know, but you can sign up for an email or a text when they do go up on sale so you can, you know, just grab that ticket. There are a TON of Power Ranger toys coming up. And when I say a ton, I mean... Jesus Christ. One of the things that I think is really cool is the fact that they're bringing old Power Rangers back as six inch figures. Some of the ones that stuck out to me personally are the Titanium Ranger from Lightspeed Rescue, Gold from Power Ranger Zeo, uh, they have the Red Alien Ranger from that short miniseries, the Alien Rangers, which was okay. They also have the Red Space Ranger, I'm mentioning that because space was the best. With that said, they're the American toys, they are not anywhere near the quality of SH figure arts figures, you know, like, uh, like this, like, Shikin Red over here, you know, not, not that quality. But some of them actually do look pretty cool, the, despite the fact that they look like they're on steroids. Also, at San Diego Comic Con, they're going to be selling a SH figure arts figure of the Black Mighty Morphin Power Ranger with the dragon armor. I'm excited for that one like you cannot believe. There's also going to be a Lord Zed figure which actually has made its way to Canada at Toys R Us in some way shape or form for $18. I That's really all I know about it. Also going to be a, other Zords and other little you know gimmicky things like a little motorcycle room kind of things. But I think the big thing here is that they're also releasing Titanus, but it's $200. Now I understand this was like a big toy back in the day and I understand its demand and people are going to want to buy it and everything. That's still a lot of money! And now with the big news out of the way, let's go to the lightning round. Let's get started. To 
celebrate 100 million Pokemon GTS trades, from now until July 31st, you can get a special edition Vivalon as a mystery gift, so uh, be sure to grab that. Transformers Universe, a MMO MOBA-like game, is now in beta, so if anyone wants to try that, be sure to check that out. If you like Little Big Planet, be sure to pick up the special edition skin that is only available for the next two or three days to celebrate July 4th. Go America! The highly anticipated show Gotham is going to be shown at San Diego Comic Con on the 26th, so uh, if you're interested, you may want to check that out. For you Space Sheriff fans, the Next Generation promo trailer has been released and uh, it looks pretty interesting. They use one of these shows for VR Trooper Season 2, I'm just saying. In any case guys, thank you so much for watching this first news video. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below and uh, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, take it easy. cat's pooping. I'm gonna have to wait a second.